Uh, so we might think of this as the practical test of a worldview, right? This this is this is a, a, a pra- very practical um, a book that we're reading, and and here she's um, offering us a, a test of worldviews. Uh, we can test worldview by taking it into the laboratory of ordinary life. Hey, mm-hmm. that's super easy that we can all afford ordinary life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can it be lived out? consistently in the real world without doing violence to human nature. Another way to say it does explain human nature appropriately. Right, right. Doing violence to human nature means gutting it for what we what we <laughs> come to understand the human Ripping nature. Ripping it apart, yeah. making it un, uh, you know, unable to be recognized. Yeah, right? so much so that you've redefined what what uh, phenomenon you're experiencing uh, within human nature. Does life function the way that the worldview says it should? Does it really fit? Uh, reality and does it match what we know about the world, mm-hmm. or as uh, Tony has always called this, the empirical adequacy test, because <laughs> that's what it's properly named. Yeah. Uh, what so we could say that the purpose of the worldview is to explain what we know about the world, and if the worldview contradicts our fundamental experience, what we know of by general revelation, then it's a good sign to be torn down, scraped, thrown away because it's worthless, because it's contradictory, or it doesn't explain everything, and. That's that, that's the purpose of science. That's what yeah. it wants to do. And yeah. so you think these men of science that uh, want to replace Christianity with with some other view of the world uh, would want to easily do that because yeah. they're not beholden to Christianity, of course. But clearly, if something better comes along in their in their uh, uh, basic assumptions, they would want to, of course, falsify that. But as we come to know from from uh, uh, Dr. Stokes, it's very hard for scientists to leave their theories. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do they have the ability to account for data in a satisfying manner? If it cannot account for this data, then it must be erroneous. Yeah. So again and again, you know, it has to meet the test of the real world, right? Does it explain our experience? If it doesn't, then how can you? Why would you think that that's the way things are? Right. 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 And and when we're dealing with philosophy, we're dealing with something. Yes, you you talk it through. You you check it. You make sure that. That you're not just throwing away something that's good because you've noticed a, a hiccup or what you perceive as a hiccup. Um, it just has Christianity says, oh, well, here's a contradiction in the Bible. We must throw it away then. No, we, we, we sit there and we test it and we see um, if the, there's actually you know uh, something to, to do away with Christianity. And mm-hmm. so far, no. And, uh, and we're calling out the other worldviews. <laughs> So all will fail to account for at least some of these stubborn facts. And uh, we learned in principle two that uh, uh, that they become reductionists. They try to define the whole in the terms of the parts. And as, as a result, it, um, it it doesn't account for everything. There are things that are exist outside the box. There are tentacles that have to be cut off <laughs> in order to fit the squid inside the box. Uh, so... Uh, what 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 sticks out of the box with with the example that uh, that Tony brought up here at the at the beginning of the book? Yeah, this materialistic yeah. Uh, position, right? It's it's human freedoms. Uh, it's it's uh, the fact serves as evidence that the person is not a very very small part in a big big machine. Instead, humans are personal beings capable of willing and choosing, which means their origin must be per- a personal being, not blind forces of nature. It's the the thing that best explains what we see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I I doubt this person honestly teaches their child in in that manner they, they if it's it's one thing to say god doesn't exist because i i can't explain or it's not satisfactory to me that uh evil exists but it's another thing to say as we were talking about okay child uh go out into the playground and remember it doesn't matter if you steal toys from the other kids because your, your actions are very small parts in a in a big thing yeah. what 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 the parent wants to view as humbling Everybody else else would see that you can't live congruent to that you live congruent to that, and and bad things would result. Uh, and so, uh, personal here does not, of course, mean warm and friendly as we kind of come to know it. It means the capacity to think, feel, and choose and act. Uh, in contrast to non-thinking substances, and uh, 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 Professor Piercy gives an example of when you combine sodium with chlorine, the atoms re- react with one another to produce sodium chloride. Table salt, mm, the good stuff. Uh, the atoms do not make conscious decisions to interact, and I think this is a really, a really good thing. Yeah. 
but that's not the case with humanity. Free will Can you counters that theory. The, I'm not going to be salt today. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I refuse. Uh, it's it, it, you know, it's it's the, the the third movie of the Matrix. Why, why do you choose to not to be table salt? Because I choose to. So, uh, uh, so so the question here then is, well, everything's atom, right? Uh, we're atoms. Uh, animals are atoms. Plants are atoms, and so. Uh, the mind in humans must be something more than just atoms in order to uh, rise above this idea that, um, that, that we can live outside the, the only material, only what we see, only what's, what's real uh, uh, materialistically. Um, it mu- there must be more to it. In other words, how do you, exp- how do you explain all the things that, that – uh, what all the things that it means to be a person right. that she's just described in terms of materialistic, you know, atoms, movements, that sort yeah. of things. How do Cause you and effect. That? Yeah. 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 How do you explain that in right. just those terms, yeah. right? So think of us like uh, Disney princesses. Uh, we're, we're, always, <laughs> we're always singing about wanting more because that's what we are. <laughs> so uh, to, to have this uh, type of, of reduction, uh, uh, reduced um, idea of humanity, we, in fact, deny then uh, human freedom. And that's a hard, hard thing to, to get around. Um, and we, we've seen uh, philosophers try and do it. Dawkins tried to, uh, to do it. In fact, and, we'll see some examples of that in this right. chapter, right, where yeah. folks are denying freedom. Yeah. Right? And, um, and uh, our, our, our um, guy that I can never remember— <laughs> When I need to, but he's the guy that uh, talked about well-being. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Here, uh, Harris. Yes. Yeah, sir, See, Harris. if I just tell you that yeah. I don't remember, <laughs> then so Harris also has this hard determinism, which which almost is a a offshoot of of Christianity idea, um, where he doesn't really believe in free will because uh, of his understanding of some some scientific theory that's out there. Uh, but again, he I mean he he authors books and he carries on podcasts and he does he does free agent things in the world that he doesn't just sit in bed and go well i'm gonna wait till the universe you know throws me out and that's right so his yeah. actions defy his position it seems so it yeah. seems so yeah. uh so the most surprising thing we will discover as we uh, go through this chapter is that many of them when pressed actually acknowledge that their worldview does not fit the facts that wow. we will see that they they either live opposite they, of what they, they say cry or, uncle right <laughs> yeah, or, or they're not able to yeah yeah good